terug naar de gevluchte Orilaas. That encounter with rare mountain gorillas was one of the highlights of my working life. It happened in a place called Karisoki, high in the mist-shrouded volcanoes, the Virunga volcanoes of Rwanda. Today, there are only 600 of those mountain gorillas left. But unhappily, because of the tragic civil war in Rwanda, their home is now no man's land. Last August, while hundreds of thousands of Rwandese were fleeing their country, a team from the Natural History Unit went back there to see what had happened to the gorillas. This is their report. The grens between Uganda and Rwanda, 12 augustus 1994. De Amerikaan Dieter Seckles, een van de grootste primatendeskundigen ter wereld, is directeur van het Diane Fossey Gorilla Fonds dat Carisoke financiert. Hij reist samen met de Britse natuurbeschermer Ian Redmond, die na zijn afstuderen met Diane Fossey in Carisoke heeft samengewerkt. Ze passeren een hulpconvooi dat wacht tot de Rwandese grens opengaat. Rwanda ligt in het hart van Afrika. Dwars door de Virunga bergen, de bestemming van Ian en Dieter, loopt de grens met Oeganda en Zaire. De bergen liggen precies tussen het winnende leger van de Tutsis in het oosten en de verslagen strijdkrachten van het voormalige Hutu-bewind in het westen van Zaire. Maar eerst rijden Ian en Dieter naar het zuiden, naar Kigali, de hoofdstad. Als ze Rwanda binnenrijden, zien ze overal de sporen van het drama dat zich er afspeelt. Duizenden vluchtelingen lopen langs de weg, wachtend op voedselhulp. Bij de auto, die met kogels is doorzeefd, liggen de lijken van twee volwassenen en een kind. Van de 8 miljoen inwoners van het land zijn er waarschijnlijk een miljoen omgekomen. Anderhalf miljoen mensen worden vermist en 2 miljoen mensen zijn naar het buitenland gevlucht. Ook de spoorzoekers en opzieners van Karisoke, die zo'n cruciale rol speelden bij de bescherming van de gorilla's. De eerste controlepost van het leger. Hun documenten zijn in orde en ze mogen doorrijden. Our mission had two goals. Um, we had to ensure the safety of the gorillas in the long term. And ensure the safety of the men, uh, the workers at Karisoki, in the short term. The men had fled the fighting in Rwanda and were in refugee camps in Zaire. But to persuade them to come back into Rwanda, we needed to add a third goal to the mission, which was to go and talk to the new government and establish relations with them and get written guarantees of the safety of the men so that we could bring them back into Rwanda. So first of all, we had to head to Kigali, to the capital of Rwanda, before we could go on to Karisoki. Toen Ian in 1976 met de Virunga-bergen kennis maakte, bestond Karisoke uit een schamele verzameling keten van golfplaten. Hij had schriftelijk gesolliciteerd bij Diane Fossey, een Amerikaanse onderzoekster die met haar gorilla-onderzoek nogal aan de weg timmerde. Diane Fossey had established Karisoke nearly 10 years before I arrived. When she first got there, the gorillas were terrified of her. They had only known humans as aggressors, as hunters. But she worked mainly on her own. And by cautiously approaching them, she was able to win their confidence. 
This was the first time since the subspecies had been discovered in 1902 that anyone had been able to enter the world of the gorilla. And she did this by studying their body language, the way they reassured each other, and gradually she was able to win their confidence to such an astonishing degree that she was almost accepted as an honorary member of the family. Ian werd aangenomen en zijn leven veranderde totaal. Working with the gorillas was just incredible. There was so much to learn. At university they just don't teach you how to approach a 400 pound mammal and study it. You have to learn the cautious, gentle approach. And you have to learn what to do if the 400 pound mammal should choose to come and approach you and whether or not you should be afraid. To learn about the behavior, of course, you have to know who's behaving, and that means you have to identify individuals by looking at the shape of the nostrils. My own particular research began to focus on the gorilla's dung, or at least the parasites that I would find therein. But whether it was dung work or behavior work, the joy of those years was just sitting and being with the gorillas, day after day, climbing a mountain and sitting in the middle of a family of gorillas who were feeding and playing and just being themselves. There is really nothing on earth like it. Kigali, the hoofdstad van Rwanda, the volgende dag. If, uh, I think our first priority is probably the um, Minister of the Environment. I don't know where the Ministry of Environment and Tourism is. Well, it's presumably in, in ORTPN. I don't know why the well, Ministry why, why, would be there. I, I would, if, if we don't know, that we could go to the Milkaline and uh, ask. Uh, we could, we could. Um, uh, Mr. Beek. Well, that's why I was going to suggest if he knows where the Ministry of the Environment is, we could go there first. Ten slotte beproeven ze hun geluk op het kantoor van de dienst voor de nationale parken. It's open. Hello. Going into the RTPN offices was a bit of a shock. Um, the place was an absolute mess, and yet this was where normally we'd be dressed in our collar and tie and going to shake hands with the director of parks and get our permits. It was obvious as we looked around that the place hadn't been visited by anyone but looters for weeks. Eventually we found that the, the civilian government was in the old Meridian Hotel. We never did find out where the military headquarters were. As we went into the building though, the stench hit us, the, the smell of putrid, rotting bodies. The bodies had gone, but the smell remained. Ze wachten binnen in de hoop dat er iemand komt opdagen. De uren verstrijken. En plotseling verschijnen, tot Ian en Dieters grote verbazing, de nieuwe eerste minister en de minister van Milieuzaken. Dat is waarom hij me dat je hier bent, zei ik: Oké, even als ik geen appointment heb, maar ik heb te meet die mensen die willen beschermen. We willen dat. Want sommige avonturen die hier komen, zeggen: Oké, kun je een gorilla baby hebben voor mij? Dat is al gebeurd. Dat is al gebeurd. You know, gorilla baby for me, this and that. Oh, that's already happening. So it's too bad. It is slecht nieuws dat er weer gorilla babies worden gestroopt. Dieter vraagt om garanties voor de veiligheid van zijn medewerkers. De premier geeft die graag. Unharmed, no problem. They will come back. The ORTPN and things. This is the problem. So let me have a word this evening with the minister. Okay. So tomorrow by, we are leaving around 9:30. Well, we could meet at 8.30, somebody Absolutely. will come here. We will meet any time. I am at, uh, on 50th floor. Okay. Yeah, room 519. Okay. Yes. Op een oude kofferschrijfmachine tikt de minister van Milieuzaken die avond persoonlijk de veiligheidsgaranties uit. De volgende dag worden ze overhandigd. Ah, c'est bon. Merci beaucoup. Fase 1 van hun taak is geslaagd en Ian en Dieter rijden Kigali uit. Normaliter kost de bergweg naar Goma aan de grens met Zaire ruim 4 uur. Maar nu zijn er overal wegversperringen. Er is zwaar gevochten en de sporen van de vuurgevechten zijn overal te zien. De Virunga-bergen zijn vlakbij. Dit is de streek waar de gevluchte medewerkers en opzieners van Karisoke vandaan kwamen. De mannen op deze oude filmopname hebben een cruciale rol gespeeld voor het behoud van de gorilla. Diane Fossey betaalde de bestrijding van de stroperij uit eigen zak. Clandestine kap 
begrazing en stroperij... vormen van meet af aan een bedreiging voor het Nationale Park Virunga... dat in 1925 werd gesticht. Sindsdien is het strikken van antilopen en andere dieren verboden. Maar de stroperij ging gewoon door... en vaak kwamen er, onbedoeld, gorilla's in de strikken terecht. Ook werd er willens en wetens op gorilla's gejaagd. Men ving ze levend en verkocht ze aan verzamelaars en dierentuinen... Hele families kwamen om bij het verdedigen van de jongen. Zoals deze twee wezen die door Dayan Fassi werden gered. Van de handen van gorilla's maakte men asbakken. Hun kop was te koop als trofee. Dayan Fassi en haar medewerkers, waaronder Ian, deden er alles aan om de populatie van ongeveer 250 gorilla's te redden. Eén gruwelijke gebeurtenis werd wereldnieuws. One of Dayan's favorite gorillas was a young male called Digit. He was so called because one of his fingers stuck out at a funny angle. But it was his personality which made him special to Diane. As a child, he would come forward and investigate her as much as she was studying him. And over the years, a friendship developed. And it was this friendship which made Digit a very special individual. In 1977 werd ook Digit door stropers vermoord. At that stage in my life, the worst thing that had happened to me. It was like finding the body of a friend. Headless, handless, hacked about. We carried his mutilated body back to Karisoki. For Diane, the shock was even worse because she'd known him for so long. He was such a close friend. It was obvious that he died defending the family from the poachers. And Diane didn't burst into tears. There was no histrionics. It was almost like a shutter went down behind her eyes as she absorbed the impact of what had happened. That night, Diane and I sat and talked, and talked all night. Um, she needed to protect the gorillas, but she was there funded to do research. So she decided to launch an appeal, set up a charity called the Digit Fund, and now the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund. Um, and that money was needed for what she termed active conservation, that is, men on the ground stopping the poaching. And that was so important then, because there was no effective conservation in the Virungas. It was controversial because she had no authority to hire men. And people talked about Diane Fossey's private army, which is an exaggeration because they weren't armed, they were just out there cutting snares. But it was essential that she do that because there's no point doing research on a species that's disappearing. Ook het berggorilla project droeg zijn steentje bij aan de bestrijding van de stroperij. Natuurbehoud, educatie en toerisme sloegen de handen in één en boekten succes. De gorilla populatie groeide. Maar toen brak de oorlog uit. Bij Goma steken Ian en Dieter de grens met Zaire over. Ze gaan op bezoek bij Popol Verhoestrate, een oude vriend van het Diane Fossi Gorilla Fonds. Hij heeft de gevluchte opzieners geholpen en heeft alleen maar slecht nieuws over de toestand in de Virunga bergen. I'm afraid that uh, you have some surprises of what you're going to see going up north. You're going to see hundreds of thousands of people. They all went in the game park. You know Marc Langui from the World Wildlife? Yes, yes. He told me he came back, uh, he went and came back. And he told me they were like ants. Going into the game park. Going into the forest, actually. Going into the forest and getting firewood oh by, by the thousands. They go into the, the Virunga park mm -hmm. and they just chop the trees. The gorillas are threatened, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. These are the people who Vervolgens komt het gesprek op een ethische kwestie die hen blijft achtervolgen. You have to be careful that you don't give the appearance to the public that you care more about the gorillas than you do about people. Yes, sir. You know, people will say, well, how can you care about gorillas when yeah, there's this uh, much tragedy? How many are left? 